Welcome back, and I bet you're all drooling out there after <laughs> Chef described this fantastic appetizer starter and that ingenious uh, thought of putting the nectarine into the mix with that. And Robin, your eyes lit up because <laughs> we're moving back into the pastries here, and that's again, we were talking too about how well the both of you work together. That just, I mean, and we're talking, it's like your noses are working together, your everything is mm -hmm. working together. Um, you absolutely came up with this to complement the um, seasonal menu, is yes. that correct? So do you offer one or two desserts or what? Is this the... It's just the uh, the one dessert for this menu. See, that you, you don't want to mm -hmm. overwhelm the uh, diner, do you? So we did a apricot frangipan. So a very classic French tart. It is a, alm a baked almond cream and almond and stone fruit is a really, really beautiful combination. Um, <clears throat> and I have the whole tart for you here to look at, but when we serve it, I serve uh, slices out of it, and then I finish it with a almond cherry swirl gelato and a little bit of whipped creme fraiche. Oh, that just really sounds amazing. And it works. Yeah. And it, it works well. It works Very well. well. Right, and it's nice because we have the uh, cherries from a previous, um, one of the previous dishes mm -hmm. so I can pull it in a little bit and it just absolutely complements it with the tart and the sweet it goes very very well do you dream this stuff up at night or where does this come from is <laughs> it just are you in the galley just throwing stuff out there to I mean it's just incredible how your imagination I mean both of you but you know in the it, pastry department I mean it comes from many different places you know you get inspired from other chefs that you've worked with in the past we all have a repertoire of recipes that we use um, a lot of times chef vincent and i will sit down together and we'll just bounce ideas back and forth um, with different flavorings that we know we want and uh, most of the time it's okay so i wanted to do apricot what complements with that you know almond goes well i kind of wanted to keep it very french stay very classic with it so that's how i came up with this um, but as far as the rest of the menu, we do keep it very seasonal as well with dessert, so it's constantly um, revolving and changing, and I always make sure to have multiple people taste it besides myself to make sure that, you know, it's hitting the palate just right. Ah, because everybody's palate resonates to mm -hmm. different things. Are either of you, now that I'm, we're on that subject for a little bit, do, is it any, in any manner kind of intimidating to be working with Chef Boulud because, I mean, with his credentials, his his background. He's one of the top French chefs in the world. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay, you just both went, yes. It's so yes, well, I mean, there's, there's, there, you know, there's no doubt. Yeah, he's uh, he's, he's definitely, you know, if uh, if I may say, but, uh, you know, uh, you know, Danielle, to me, represents, you know, the the highest, you know, uh, uh, sh French chef in America, period. I mean, there's no, you know, there's no doubt in that and, and anybody's mind that works in, in kitchens in a in North America right now and uh, but you know always of course goes way beyond that because uh, as I finished you know uh, telling you earlier that you know the clientele here in Las Vegas is just not you know uh, people coming in from around the block but uh, you know from all continent and uh, whether they're right. they're you know visitors and they have from high rollers I mean some mm -hmm. a lot of these people are people with a discretionary mm -hmm. income they've had the the wherewithal to travel and sample some of the world's finest yeah. restaurants has uh, so and you've been at DB for a year now I yes. know that mm -hmm. the restaurant itself has been open for two years yep. mm -hmm. but you've been on board uh, for a year and how long have you been there Robin I actually opened the restaurant oh you were there at the mm -hmm. opening yes. yeah I thought you looked familiar I was there <laughs> at the grand opening but still uh, for you to come from Rhode Island find yourself working for again a, a chef of the caliber mm -hmm. that Dan Danielle is and um, did you ever dream that you would be there working and pretty yes. much you work side by side with him sometimes, mm -hmm. right? I mean, oh, yeah, quite very often, quite often. Very, uh, very hands on, of course. Uh, you know, and Danielle, if you uh, if you know a little bit about you know the restaurant world and have been exposed to the restaurant world, uh, is someone that uh, uh, you know where the uh, uh, I would say the level of uh, 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 you know um, involvement and uh, and uh, uh, work you know work workmanship, right? Workmanship, yes. uh, is is pretty uh, is pretty pretty high because uh, you know is is. But you're know, not Danielle's intimidated. I, from I get the feeling that you enjoy and perhaps it's mostly a intimidated. Yes, def, def, definitely. So when when Danielle's in the room, you know, uh -huh. and uh, oh, he you know, commands presence. We uh, we we're, we're not in uh, we're not in presence of Danielle at the moment, so <laughs> it's uh, it might be slightly easier for us to talk about it. But uh, you know, uh -huh. yeah, Danielle is a. Uh, is someone that has a basically a uh, an aura that just uh, goes well beyond you know 
is uh, is uh, you know a physical person. It's just that uh, you know the um, the amount of uh, of us not wanted to uh, deceive any any of the uh, you know um, any of the standards that uh, Danielle stands for mm -hmm. and uh, and all the all the basically the, the the you know the ideas that you have of of having a, a dining experience in one of Danielle's restaurants. Uh, all together, whether it's in in London, whether it's in Singapore, in in in, in Vegas, in New York, of course, or anywhere else that Danielle has a restaurant, you you mm -hmm. most definitely want to, you know, leave up to uh, to what the what the guest had a, a experience prior uh, in in one of the other. Uh, well, you would hate to or disappoint him, mm -hmm. but obviously, he, and the man knows what he's doing. He has mm -hmm. you both there, and I'm sure there's he's definitely had his reasons for that. If you could create. Uh, that, and let's just, I just thought of this, <laughs> let's just throw something out there off the top of your head. If you could create an entree for Chef Danielle, and if you could create a dessert for Chef Danielle, right off the top of your head, what do you, what comes to mind? And we'll start with the lady first. <laughs> if you could create a dessert, <laughs> we're going to put <laughs> you right on the spot here. Uh, when it comes down to it, I think we're always trying to create for the chef. Good answer. It's, you know... I'm extremely proud to work for him, uh -huh. and so I want to make him extremely proud to have us working for him. You know, so it's every time I'm creating and designing any aspect of my menu, it is in the thought of making sure that Chef Danielle is going to approve of it and be proud of it. Does he have any favorites that you know of? Is there a particular dish or a particular dessert, say appetizer or? Yeah, well, you know, Dan Danielle is from Lyon. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna deny the fact that you know, as a French and not being from Lyon, uh, you know, Lyon stands for the capital of food in in, in France, no doubt, uh -huh. uh, if it's not in the world. So, and you know, you have to be humble to recognize that, you know, at at any point. And uh, you know, it's it's pretty obvious that uh, you know some of the some of the very uh, I would say some of the very uh, uh, you know, peculiar and, and and important uh, uh, you know. Uh, Persons and chefs that were, you know, at the, uh, uh, many years ago and in, involved in the food business, uh, a lot of them are or did, you know, great, great, great things in the whole Lyon and uh, area. So no doubt about that. So uh, it, it becomes a, I would say, a, a natural thing to think that you know Danielle would probably be more, uh, I would say, attracted by something that calls back home and uh, mm -hmm. typical, I would say, typical classic Lyonnaise uh, cuisine. Is probably something that you know you would please Danielle with, and uh, uh, pretty simple, you know, pretty simple, pretty humble. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the, the food. Uh, you know, we're far from the ocean, mm -hmm. um, so you know, uh, we most definitely have you know uh, ingredients that coming in from from the ground, right. and uh, all the different uh, uh, you know uh, lakes around and and, and fresh water. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, uh, pike fish and 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 you know uh, uh, things like crayfish and things that are you know uh, uh, on the on I would say on the on the on the fish side but uh, not necessarily coming in from the ocean and uh, typically uh, you know you have uh, items that are not maybe as uh, as desirable as uh, they would come from the ocean but uh, you know that's what made that cuisine I think pretty uh, pretty interesting because you know it's truly uh, 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 ingredient driven uh, uh, before anything else. You know? Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, because of course there's a lush countryside around that area as well. Amazing countryside, yeah. and they're they're Sustainable. they're blessed by you know the weather that's uh, absolutely uh, just and the wines. A, in, insanely good. And you know, typically you know that where the wine is good, then you right. know. There's a pretty good chance that the weather and 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 all the soil and everything, uh, the terrain is is, is actually pretty uh, good and proper for for growing you know all kind of uh, ingredients, vegetable and food fruit. and growing growing you know stone of course fruits. stone fruit trees and desserts go so well you know now people have to, with wine again you know I don't think in America up until you know the food whole food frenzy other than Julia Childs <laughs> who used to drink half the cherry that she was putting in her food but we've had some great homegrown chefs as well but now like mm -hmm. again Las Vegas has become such a, a standard actually for the world and you two are right up there on that pedestal we're going to talk a little bit more about the seasonal menu because you, I see you have some other surprises there to discuss. And um, we'll talk a little bit more with you about the sweet tooth end of it and complimenting with the wine and stuff. Don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> 